Moreover, uh, in the Old Testament, it is clear that uh, God does not change. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, it says, I am Yahweh, I do not change. So if Yahweh was not a man, then for him to become a man would involve change, and that would contradict the Old Testament. Uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, in chapter 13 and 18, uh, it, it is uh, also given as an imperative that if anyone comes to you and uh, calls upon you to worship another god other than Yahweh, then uh, you should stone him to death. Now imagine the situation. Suppose Yahweh had in mind that eventually one day uh, I will come on, on the earth in the form of a man, and obviously people are not going to recognize me because I already told them I don't look like anything that walk on the earth, then he has made it necessary for the Jews to stone him if he's going to come in the form of a man. So when he sends his son, as our Christian friends say, in the form of a man, uh, who happens to be God in now in some, uh, almost like in human disguise, but our Christian f friends will say that he is not in human disguise. He's fully human and fully God at the same time. But uh, when he now appears to everyone as a human being, then naturally they would have no option but to stone him, in which case uh, it follows that God would have set up the Jews to kill his son. So it, it, it does not really gel with the, with the scripture. Uh, we'll go ahead and take this next caller. Caller, please tell us your name and where you are calling from. Uh, Salam alaikum. I'm Khalil. I'm calling from Canada. Alaikum salam. Very good. Welcome. Well, Thank you. Are there any Jews out there calling? I'm joking. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, All right. I'm kidding. Go the ahead. thing is, that a couple, right. a couple Muslim bloggers post a lot of your videos. That's why you get a lot of views. No, I am. I am so thrilled. I'm so thrilled. I, okay. I, I am so. Fortunate. I'm so fortunate. I, I'm not going to go on on this because this is a, a show, but Alaikum Salam. Welcome to the show, my cousin. Please tell me, what, what is your question? So I watched a lot of your older videos, and you talk a lot about the real virulent anti-Semitism in the early church, with the church fathers and the reformers, really anti-Semitic, and they accused Jews of deicide, killing God, etc. Oh, yeah. My question is this. Christians believe in atonement, that Jesus was the perfect sacrifice and he needed to die to atone for our sins and to save us and give us salvation. So shouldn't they love the Jews for killing him? Because if they didn't kill Jesus, there would be no sacrifice. We would all be doomed to hell forever. And to add to that, if they say it was Jesus' fate to be sacrificed, then the Jews, you know, they're predestined to kill him, and then you can't blame them. They didn't have free will. So either way, they shouldn't be blaming the Jews for killing Jesus, because that, that is the cause of their salvation. And again, <laughs> same thing with Judas. That's funny. You are one smart Muslim. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's brilliant. Okay. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for calling, and I'll explain, I'll explain, your, I'll explain your question. Awesome. Thank you, Cleo. Uh, Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you, and thank, thank you so now? much. You are okay. smart. Can we hang up now? Yes, go right ahead. Uh, <laughs> go right ahead, but stay in touch. Thank Bless you, Khalil. You. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. Shalom. Wow. That was a, that is a, 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 a absolutely brilliant question. It's so brilliant, I don't even know where to start. Okay, so the key is, um, let's just start, I'll, I'll just, I, I just want to, say the question. I don't even have to reframe it because the question was exp articulated well, but just very quickly. And that is in, in Christian theology, uh, with the exception of Luke Acts, same author, we don't know his name. We call him Luke and we're just going to call him Luke. It makes everybody. Aside from the author of Luke Acts, um, the uh, writers of the Christian Bible all believe that Jesus died for our sins, and God needed Jesus to die for our sins. And incidentally, whenever you do not, ha this is going to offend the Christians. And if I offend you, if you if you get offended easily, please turn off the show. I, I really, I. But if you want to learn and then just think about it, but if if God um, is perfect. And Rachamim, a Rachmon, he's full of mercy. 
And he, he's a kol yachol. He can do everything. And he is, in fact, the attributes of God that we find in Scripture. In the Torah, that God is kel, rachem, v'chanun, erech, apayim, rab, chesem, emes. If this is, if you believe that, then God doesn't need anything to forgive you except for mercy. God doesn't need a secretary. He doesn't need anything. And there is no answer to this question. The moment you believe that God needs something to forgive someone, you have kissed radical monotheism goodbye. Okay? And that's the difference. And that really is the difference between Jews and Muslims and Christians. Because Christians believe that ultimately that Jesus had to die for your sins in order for you to be forgiven, which means the Father could not forgive you without that, without Jesus dying for your sins. And that could have only occurred, only occurred, if that perfect system, the oracle of God, the word of Hashem, which Torah Hashem to Mima, the Torah of God is perfect, not my words, the words of the prophet, the moment you tamper with the absolute radical monotheism, then God needs things. Okay. Now, let's talk about this. The Christian Bible is astoundingly anti-Semitic. And when I say Semitic, one thing, please don't do, I, I ask people, if don't write it on the comments and YouTube and email. You know that language is that language changes and convention changes, okay? This is a point. So the term anti-Semitic is, of course, it doesn't mean every, against everybody who is a sense of Shem, which, but in our modern, it means Jew hatred. And I'll use Jew hatred if I have to, but don't go, we're all semi, that's, that's not, we're talking using the conventional language, okay? Now the key is, the Christian Bible completely blames the Jews for killing Jesus. And incidentally, the the later the book that it, the the later the book in the Christian Bible, the more anti Jewish it is. It is very easy to create this line of trajectory. There is no doubt, and I and I'm not trying to sell books. You know, there's like no numbers, send in your money. I never do this, but I will tell you, there's a huge chapter on this in volume one of my book. Um, if we go to Mark, certainly the Jews are responsible for urging Pontius Pilate um, uh, to have Jesus crucified. But they're kind of both in and out, but the Jews are responsible. But once you go to, you you move 15 years past Mark, <sighs> It like accelerates, so the hatred toward the Jewish people, and more importantly, the way the Jews are portrayed as fully culpable for the death of Jesus, and more importantly, the responsibility and culpability of the Romans for Jesus' crucifixion recedes. They're both happening simultaneously. In Matthew, the Jews are actually saying... Not only are we responsible for this, we, but we take his blood on us and our children. We, that is an M source. That's the verse, by the way, from the Christian Bible that Jews were begging Mel Gibson, this great luminary of the church, not to include in his movie The Passion of the Christ. And he did. And he fooled everyone because everyone thought he'd take it out. I, I cannot tell you, nobody knows how many Jews died because of that, because of that one disgusting passage, and it is, because it holds all of all Jews of all time responsible for the death of Jesus. Um, once we get to the book of Mark, uh, once we get to the book of uh, Luke, we have very, very similar, the Jews are completely culpable. If you don't believe me, if you think I'm making it up because I, I, I want you to believe that uh, the New Testament is a bad book, don't read it, because I'm anti-Christian. If you think that way, that means you've never read the Christian Bible. That means you have never read a Christian commentary, in, un, unless you've, all, all you're reading are Christian commentaries written in the last 50 years, where it's not in vogue to speak this way. 
Um, and, and incidentally, once you get to the book of John, ah, oh, the culpability of the Jew becomes complete. And in fact, these words are put in the mouth of Jesus in a conversation with Pontius Pilate. One of the things that make John unique, I know I'm taking time, but I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page on this. One of the things that is unique about John that makes it different than the synoptic gospels, meaning Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there are many things that make John very different. Of course, they share a lot in common. But one of the things that uh, we find in the book of John is that there are huge dialogues in John that we just don't find in the synoptic gospels. And one of these is, I mean, just compare the conversation between Pontius Pilate and Jesus in the book of Mark and just open two Bibles. Or if you have two screens on your computer, open that and open that and look at the difference in the dialogue. If you don't see a difference, what will I tell you? Now, in the book of John, the dialogue goes that Jesus completely exonerates Pontius Pilate. We know and, and no Christian argues this. Pontius Pilate was a psychopath from hell. Pontius Pilate made, I don't want to say, it's not right to say made ISIS look like um, Girl Scouts, but he is on that level. He was so sick, so depraved, according to every, I mean, this is unassailable. We all know this. He was a very, very, I mean, he was... I'm not going to go into because it's not germane. This is too big a question. I want to just, but I want to make sure that everyone understands this. So in John, if you look carefully, Jesus says to Pilate, you are not accountable for this event that's about to happen. But it is those who gave me over to you. It is their sin that is greater. That means, in, you don't find that in Mark. In fact, Mark, Jesus is quiet. And he barely says, you say it. I mean, it's like, you know, so it's a very, very different. So in John, this is why, by the way, in in the Ethi in Ethiopian in the Ethiopian Church, uh, Pontius Pilate is is considered a saint, and according to their tradition, he uh, repented, committed suicide. <laughs> I mean, don't ask. I mean, you're going really, really look it up for yourself. Okay. And in fact, if we go further, I'm going to go quickly. If we, we can, the, what I want to demonstrate, and this is unassailable, the only people who don't believe what I've just told you this are fundamentalist Christians. Nice people, but they can't believe this because they can't, if they, if they do believe that the Christian Bible, first of all, has evolved, A, and worse, is an anti Semitic book, then they can't be Christians. So it, they have to rewrite this all. But a natural reading must say this. And if you go further to the Gospel of Peter, which nearly made it to the canon, if you go to the, um, to the Epistle of Barnabas, Epistle of Barnabas, it, it just works. So you, you read the writings of, of the church father Melito, read it. It's, they, we found it. This is early. It will blow your mind away. Read it. It's very well written. But read what he wrote about the Jews that they killed the Lord, killed our Lord. I mean, it's just, it's a very well-written piece. Moreover, finally, read the Patristic. So why do I take the time? Because I know that you believe you're watching a rabbi who just has it in for Christianity. And like I'm sort of setting up something to make Christianity look bad so you won't be a Christian. I'm not. Uh... Read the Church Fathers. Go, get a collection of the Church Fathers online. It's free. Type in the word Jew. Do Control F. Type in the word Jew and see what they had to say. And you'll know that I'm not setting up a straw man and toppling it. Whether it's the anti nicene Church Fathers, whether it's this Constantine who was a filthy, dirty anti-Semite. Read the letter he wrote about the Christian calendar, and you will, you will fall on the floor. And the and the and the the. The church fathers from, whether it's Augustine, if you read the City of God. So what I'm trying presenting to you is the church fathers all wrote the most horrific things about the Jews. So this is not a, a rabbi in Indonesia who's reading something into the text. This is not the consensus of Christians throughout history. This is every Christian 
believe this. Until we get to the premillennial dispensation of the mid 19th century of John Nelson Darby, I'm not going to get there where Christians are going to have to. Um, are going to reverse engineer some stuff. Well-meaning people, Schofield, but okay. But what I'm telling you, the point I want to make is that what I'm sharing with you is not the opinion of a biased Jew. Everybody, Calvin, Luther, Booster, it didn't make a difference. They all believe this. Now, the question is, why is the church, I mean, how many Jews were slaughtered by the, by the church for killing Jesus? No one knows the number. No one does. And everything I'm teaching you, unless you're going to M Moody Bible Institute, or unless you're going to some, they'll all agree. In fact, I will say this tr truthfully to you. I'll even say this to the even evangelical Christians today are embarrassed by this, are embarrassed not by the New Testament. They will reverse engineer it. Not because they're evil. It's because they can't. They have to. But... I have not met in my life uh, personally. Now, I've read some horrible things written by evangelical Christians about Jews. I have. But I have not met personally an evangelical Christian who is not deeply ashamed of the behavior of the church. So I assure you, this is not like, okay, now, the question the cooler is, therefore, is, I, and, and the, people ask me, why do I set up these questions? Because you will never understand the force of this question unless you understand this as a, you know, you, you get the, the postulate. You'll, 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 unless you understand this is absolutely axiomatic, unassailable. So the question then is, if in fact Jesus had to die for the sins of mankind in order for man's sins to be expiated and man can go to heaven and the price uh, can be paid for the sins of mankind, Romans everything, <laughs> this is everywhere, okay? Mark everything. This is, this is, this is a central creed of the church. So why don't Christians walk over to Jews and say, thank you so much for killing Jesus? Why didn't they? Do you know that in Europe, every uh, Good Friday... I mean, it was the day that the church marked um, the crucifixion of Jesus. The, that's the Friday before Easter. Uh, the tradition in Europe, widespread, and in the Russian Orthodox Church's church, was to bring a Jew into the church, and the bishop would smack the Jew in the face publicly. I mean smack. In fact, there are a number of instances where the Jew was hit so hard in the head that he dropped dead from the concussion. So, to, but the question is why? If it was always God's plan that the Messiah had to die for the sins of mankind, and the Jews were supposed to bring this about, Christians should walk over to every Jew, kiss our feet. We don't want you to do this. And the question is, and say thank you, because if you didn't kill Jesus, I'd be a sinner. <laughs> so, it, as it turns out, no matter what we do, we get it from every side. On the one hand, we're responsible for killing Jesus, not just those few Jews. Now, yes, if you read the very late stuff, the messianic stuff, the premillennial dispensational stuff, they will rewrite it that way. Not that they're evil. There is evil stuff going on, but this isn't. This is really people are just going, uh, Christian anti-Semitism is terrible. We've got to reverse engineer. They've got all kinds of what I think are torturous explanations, I think. Any, by any standard they would be, but, uh, but they mean well on this. They reverse engineering. I'm not going to go into pre-millennial dispensation. But the question is, if the Jews were the instrument that God used to save the world from sin, why are Christians calling Jews Christ killers? They should say, thank you. Because if you had not killed Jesus, if you were not the instrument responsible for murdering the Christians, our Lord and Savior, Jesus would have died of Alzheimer's and we would have no atonement. And that shows you how wickedness, how evil, how hatred is something so, such a human attribute. And unfortunately, Christianity, and I mean Christianity, is 
have been has been throughout history the primary vehicle that conveyed this that the Jews were absolutely the devil and John 8:44 was taken very seriously and Christians who hated Jews were in a sense rational meaning reading these texts in the Christian Bible and drawing the conclusion that the Jews are the most banal nation in history who are the enemies of God and these are the words of the church fathers these are not, like, I'm not making this up. They were rational, but it is irrational. The, the caller is asking a brilliant question. So why don't, doesn't the church praise us? We kill each as well. It, 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 it is absolute insanity. But this is what the Jews had to deal with for 2,000 years.